Well, you beautiful souls, welcome to Meryl's Mystic. I am Meryl, and I am so glad that you've chosen to tune in and come here to connect with me and the energy around us and each other, and I just appreciate you being here. So I'm trying it a little differently today. Uh, I've already pulled a couple cards, uh, and I wanted to see if, like, you can see what I'm doing. So before we start, I would like us all to take a deep breath together. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes, relax your shoulders, sit up straight, take a deep breath in your nose, pause the top and out your mouth. So inhale, hold it, breathe out your mouth. Doesn't that feel good? Okay, so we've had quite the intro to the year, y'all, haven't we? Um, we had our big new moon right at the beginning that in all of this cosmic energy there's just prime for us to make some moves and make some things happen. So we have a full super moon and it's also the wolf moon because it's the first full moon of the year and it is also a lunar eclipse so that makes it a blood moon so it is a super full blood wolf moon total lunar eclipse that's a mouthful uh, so just remember that all the energy is super magnified right now so breathing is important um, but there's all this is also very auspicious um, I think the full moon can have a bad rap, um, that it makes people act crazy. Uh, but the energy right now, uh, in the planets is really just priming us. I can't say that enough. Prime time. It's prime time, y'all. It's priming us to take advantage of the energy to make the changes that we want to make in our lives. Awesome. So, um, and by magnify, just remember that it's magnified. So it's like everything's under a big magnifying glass. And especially with lunar eclipses and full moons, it's the need is to shine light on hidden things or things in our subconscious that need to be brought to light. And we'll talk about that soon in the cards. Um, so a little info, we are now transitioning from Capricorn into Aquarius. And this full moon will be in Leo because the full moon is always opposite of where the Sun is in astrology so uh, the Leo card the Leo sign is represented by the strength card in the tarot uh, which is kind of self-explanatory uh, the Leo tends to be the strongest of the uh, zodiac and they're very much its strength it's a very outward strength. You know, they're not afraid to roar in the face of danger, in the face of adversity or conflict. While Aquarius is a very um, evolved sign, it's near the, it's the second to last oldest sign and they're kind of the, the philosophers of the astrology and it's represented by the star card. And I love the star card because the star card is kind of like the phoenix after it's risen from the ashes it's the new the rebirth after you've burned down the old you after you shed the skin uh the star is the rebirth and your deep connection between the earth and the cosmos the heavens uh so while leo is outwardly strength it has an outward strength i the aquarius has such a inward strength that they you know, the Leo is the first one to jump to your defense, and Aquarius kind of sits back because they don't feel, they know that they don't really have to prove anything to anybody. Not that Leo's trying to prove something, that's kind of a shadow uh, quality of them, but we need both. We need both those strengths. So let's get into it. So first off, I want to do pull card for what in our subconscious needs to be brought to light, since that's the main energy here. And is this is, this is gonna be intense you guys I'm telling you like the you have 
you got to do something like one little thing we'll write down one little thing change one little thing do something you know um, look back at the couple weeks ago if you were making your intentions for the year um, and just make the effort to show up and forgive yourself when you can't when you're not showing up every day I have to do that all the time I have intentions that I'm trying to put into practice so that I can make sure that I feel my best and sometimes I don't show up for myself every day because I'm a human and it doesn't mean I failed it just means tomorrow's a new day and you're gonna get back on the horse over and over and over again until you're riding off in the sunset okay so what in our subconscious right now needs to be brought to light and I got pulled the justice card make sure there's no glare there there we go so this is so interesting I mean it's no secret to anybody what's happening especially here in the states in our um, politics right now it's crazy um, I've always I th could have sworn I heard this quote somewhere uh, I always say there's no change without a fire and I could have sworn I heard it in a song or somewhere I googled it today can't find it I don't know where it came from it must have been some crazy download I was supposed to know because um, I love the imagery of the Phoenix and the Scorpio like that um, so there's no, there can be no change without a fire and things are burning down, y'all. Um, so this is interesting that what needs to be brought to light? Justice. And just, I, I've never actually looked up the definition of justice, so that's what I did. I, was, I know the justice card is about, you know, that balancing of the powers. And it's the Libra card. And Libra tends to also find the beauty in all things, but they're this connected to the scales. If you see the scales, and they're the um, king, queen, royalty's hand. Uh, so the literal definition of justice is just behavior or treatment. Synonyms are fairness, fair play, equality, or I'm sorry, equity, um, impartiality. Uh, partiality I can I can read um, so and I feel like this is a great mirror also for what's going on right now your subconscious is a mirror that we need to not only make sure that we're being fair to each other but we need to be fair to ourselves first so I feel like if we're not being fair to ourselves we're probably not being fair to other people around us um, also it's there's a lot of looking in the mirror that needs to happen. We need to be um, recognizing the the equality in souls. That no soul is more important than the other. So there needs to be. There's just a need for this balance and for things to be just and and as fair as possible. I mean, the world is an unfair place, but we have the power to make it a little easier for each other. So moving on. Um, the second card, the second and third card I pulled kind of go together and it's interesting. I just pulled these three cards to start and I'll show you kind of like how the imagery is crossing over. Um, so for, so the second two cards is what do we need to accept about ourselves and what do we need to accept about others? Um, which I, I came up with those before in the first, like before I pulled anything. So this is a great balance. We need to be accepting of ourselves and of others. So what do we need? What's going to do that? What's going to make that all balance out? So for what we need to accept about ourselves, we got the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. So the Queen of Pentacles, she's she's very, she has that inner and outer strength. She's very connected to the earth, and she's very um, structural in control, thoughtful, nurturing. I mean, look at all how much greenery is around her. Uh, so when it's in reverse, again, with the mirroring is, if this is asking us to find an equal ground, this is reminding us that we're not always perfect also. When she's in reverse, this is kind of, it, it's questioning whether you are actually this energy that we all think we are. 
I mean, we strive for this. We strive to be grounded and balanced and fair and um, equanimous. I know words, but we need to remember that we are not perfect and that nobody else is perfect either. So how are we holding others to even a higher standard than we hold ourselves? Or are we holding ourselves too high, to, too high of a standard? So we need to accept that you can't be on and perfect 100% of the time and nobody else can. So this justness here is all about forgiveness of ourselves and each other. And this is the continuing themes that we've been talking about. So then what do we need to accept about others? The magician. Again, the magician has all the tools and all the power. He's at the very beginning of the zodiac. We're all on this journey together and we all have these the equal power and the equal right. That no no your our no one soul is more important than the other. And I don't know if you've noticed that they're all yellow. So they're all yellow. See the yellow? And then we're floor, we have so much um, greenery and flora around us. Um, even look, they're, they're all wearing red. Equal, there's an e, there's even in the imagery, there's, they're all got the same. So we have to remember that. We have to remember that all, if we have more power than somebody else, we need to use that power to help lift each other up, not knock each other down. Okay? So let's keep going. So then, um, how are we in relationship with our intuition? Um, I really wanted to keep this theme of our intuition going. It keeps coming up. Um, the Aquarius card, the star card is all about that connection. So how can we, how are we in relationship with our intuition? Because I know we've been working on it. The world. Again, the world around us, um, the world is traveling. Um, it's the end of cycles um, to begin another one. You know, the, the imagery of the wreath here, the success of the ending of a cycle, or the beginning of something else. So I really feel like this is the congratulations. You've shedded all those things. You've got rid of those things that no longer serve you. You've shedded that skin. You're, you're coming into a new connection with your intuition. You, you've done the work to, to enhance that, to really have that, that connection with you. And because it's the world, that connection with you ripples out to the world around you. If you like imagine your little star, your little light, it's almost like we all need to build this little light net and it starts with you and you brighten your light and it spreads out and then this person over here spreads out their light and you, everyone's helping each other light their lights and it all spreads out into this really cool net of, of love. It's the age of Aquarius. I think it's still Aquarius. We might be in the age of Pisces now. Um, okay, so how can we connect deeper to our strengths? The hangman. So it's interesting because the hangman um, is another intuitive card. So we need to continue that, that deepening of our intuition, that connection. Um, and, and also, I feel like this a little bit, you know, if we're some, if we're people who are maybe a little, and I'm guilty of it too, Facebook reminded me of that recently, uh, sometimes we can be a little too quick to roar, and this energy is reminding us that if, if you are connected to your intuition, which is your inner strength, then you might not have to roar. The roaring might be a waste of energy in the long run. Uh, I heard this great quote um, a while back and it's one of my favorites. It's, 
and can't speak butterfly language to caterpillar people. So how are we using our energy? Because the hangman, he's here by choice. He's paused himself by choice for his own further enlightenment. See, we got our red and our yellow coming in again and our nice uh, greenery. We're wrapped in our greenery here. These are also our fixed signs here. The world and the Wheel of Fortune have our fixed signs on them. And uh, the eagle is Scorpio. This, the person is Aquarius. Uh, the Bulls, Taurus, and Leo. So we have, here's our Leo and Aquarius energy right here. So this is, this is the prime time. I can't say that enough. I mean, this is, this is crazy, you guys. This is, we have four major arcanas, all upright. If you do not take advantage of this time, to improve and evolve and learn and just f feel better about yourself and your world, it, you're going to not only do a disservice to yourself, but you just do a disservice to those around you. So please take advantage of this time. Make sure that you're, um, I mean, you're here with me right now so you, I appreciate that that you are making an effort and um, tuning in but we have to add, make sure that we're taking actual action steps also for ourselves okay so I glanced at the bottom of the deck earlier too and we have the hermit another major arcana um, the hermit and the hangman I feel like are kind of similar um, similar position the hangman comes a couple cards after the hermit um again this is the that inner knowing and that inner strength just, and then we and then all the cards are reversed after that so i think we've gotten the message <laughs> so let me kind of try to show you guys again so here we go here is So make sure that we're being just to ourselves and others, recognizing that we can't be perfect, recognizing um, the power in each other, accepting that we're all on the same, we should all be on the same playing field, and that if you've been given more power, that you use that to lift other people up, not push them down. Our intuition is coming along, our connection with our intuition is coming along beautifully. And remembering that this, this connection here, and this understanding here will strengthen our that inner strength so that we don't waste our energy when we don't need to. So, um, and then I have, I want to pull a mystical shaman card because these are like the most powerful oracle cards. They're crazy right on all the time, and we have this great energy right now. So, oh, the giveaway. Um, it's not just the light picking up the glare. It is, it is actually just like a bright card. Oh, there's a woman here with um, angel wings on her face. There's angel wings here. Um, she's got her arms lifted out like she's giving it up, giving it up to the universe. I don't think I've ever pulled this one before. I say that, I'm sure I say that a lot, but I feel like I pull some all the time and then other ones I never see. Okay, the essence, the giveaway is the gift you offer to life without attachment, without expecting anything back. You can only give what is truly yours. A smile, a nod of encouragement, a gentle touch and a kind word. This is not giving to others what you no longer want, like the sweater that no longer fits, but gifting that which is most precious, your authentic love and genuine feelings. And you can only do that if you know how you feel and you're connected to yourself. The invitation, make a list of 10 people and things for which you are grateful. The grateful game, I love the grateful game. 
Connect with the feeling of gratitude. The giveaway comes to ask you to feel the same gratitude without needing anything or anyone to inspire it and to share this gratitude with those you meet. As you offer thanks, your heart opens and you start realizing how much life has given you. You heal your feelings of scarcity and open yourself to the abundance that surrounds you. The giveaway invites you to be in the flow of life as you give freely and receive freely. It is the medicine of the giveaway. It is difficult for you to set limits on how much is it, I'm sorry, is it difficult for you to set limits on how much of yourself you give? If you give more than is healthy, then you will not be able to give for long. You'll feel resentful with your partner or associates, or you'll feel like the world owes you something in return. Does the world owe you something? Or do you owe it to yourself? Notice if you give for any reason other than pure generosity, are you trying to be liked or accepted? Are you hoping to heal an old wound? Start giving to yourself first and foremost. Offer yourself the care, the love, the time, and the acceptance that you are longing for. Once you experience plenty, then you can give, then you can truly give to others. What have we been talking about all this time, you guys? Oh, it's all it starts here, and not in a selfish way, in a healthy way, so that you can healthily help each other. So that's why the queen came up for us in reverse of what we need to accept about ourselves. We might not be even recognizing our abundance. Um, I cannot remember his name. I am so sorry. I'm going to post him underneath because this author, he's a, I'm pretty sure he's a PhD. He has all these books about abundance. I have one of his little daily calendars. But he was on Hay House Radio the other day talking about abundance because I've I've been trying to do the law of attraction, how to manifest, manifest, manifest. And he said this really great thing about abundance. It's not something that you manifest. It's not something you create. It's something that already exists around you. Abundance is a universal truth that is right there for the taking, but you have to be able to see it to grab it. And I think the queen is telling us that we're not even seeing it. So he gave a, he, um, this author, he gave a great um, little thought starter for this, which um, has really, I've actually, I had like an aha moment less than 24 hours later. And because we have to start recognizing abundance, write down, writing down, recognizing the grateful game, what we're grateful for, to feel that abundance, to see it around us. So his thought starter is, I feel abundant when? I feel abundant when? When do you feel abundant? Um, and so right then when I heard it, I was like, okay, you know, I feel abundant when... There's food in the fridge. I feel abundant when there's money in my bank account. These are, you know, you start with obvious things that make you feel like you have not just enough, but you have plenty. And then the, the day later, less than 24 hours later, I had this moment where I was scheduling clients and I was kind of worried about some timing and the weather was going to be bad and it... I was just kind of, I was a little concerned that it wasn't going to go as smoothly as I usually like my day to go. And so then I said, I, you know, I try to give it up and just, it's all going to work out the way it's supposed to. And sure enough, I got some text messages from clients. It all, it all worked out, not just for me, but for the people around me. And I, I didn't even realize it at first. I was having this great moment. I was like, yes, it's just this feels so good. I love when I love when it works out for me and everybody and I don't have to rush around and everyone gets taken care of. And I was like, oh my God, I feel abundant when my flow is flowing. <laughs> so it's kind of gross when you say it that way. I feel abundant when 
things work out smoothly, not just for me, but those around me when we're all, it's all working out for us together. And I just, I had, I rushed home. I wrote, I had to write it down. It's on my board in my room so I can see it because the more you recognize it, the more you get out of that scarcity mindset and you can trust that you're going to be provided for. And it's hard. It's, you have to practice it all the time. I have to practice it all the time too. That's why I love these tools to help you, to help remind you because we're only human. Okay. Um, awesome. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Um, thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, follow me, do all the things, tell your friends. Um, and yeah, I, I believe in you. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks.